In this video, we're going to be finding the equation of a line given two points and applying it to a real-world problem. In our Stacking Papers 3-Act Math task, we were looking at a scenario where we had five stacks of paper on a table. And the students had to use their prior knowledge knowing the height of the table and the stack as well as the height of an individual stack of paper in order to find out the height of the table. Today we're going to change that scenario slightly by providing students with some other given information and using thicker paper as well as two stacks of paper in order to find the height of a shorter table. And as you can clearly see here, our new stack of paper is definitely taller than the previous stack of paper. So today in class, students were provided with the following information. They had the height of a stack of paper on the left, where there are 12 stacks of paper total. And that height was including the height of the table. So the height from the floor all the way to the top of that stack of 12 papers is 142.75 centimeters, while a stack of five packages of paper plus the table height was a total of 100.75 centimeters. Using this information, most students in my class this morning took the approach of subtracting both heights in order to find the height or the difference between the heights of the two stacks. And by doing so, students found that the difference between the two stack heights is 42 centimeters. Because they have the height between the top of the 12 stacks of paper to the top of the 5 stacks of paper, students also noted that there were 12 minus 5 stacks or 7 stacks total giving us the 42 centimeters. So since we have 7 stacks measuring up to 42 centimeters that means we actually have a slope of 42 over 7 or a rate of change. And if we look at this further and actually reduce this, 42 centimeters over 7 stacks can also be written as 6 centimeters for every 1 stack, or a slope of 6. Now using the information from either of our stacks, I could focus on our stack of 12 papers, and I can use the knowledge that every stack of paper is 6 centimeters in order to determine how much or the height of the table. So 12 stacks of paper times 6 centimeters is 70 centimeters total and therefore our table height must be 70.75 centimeters. We could also confirm this using the 5 stacks on the right side of the table and we can even set it up slightly differently using some of our prior knowledge if we wish. Since we're dealing with a rate of change of 6 over 1, it's only natural that we can actually set up a proportion showing our two rates 6 over 1 is equal to x over 5. And since we know we have to multiply one stack by 5 to get 5 stacks, we'll have to do the same on the top and we'll get a total of 30 centimeters for your five stacks. And thus we've confirmed once again that the table height must be 70.75 centimeters total. Now today after taking up a few solutions with students, we noticed there were also a few other ways that we could have gotten to the, to the solution using some of our prior knowledge, such as using a table. By plotting our x variable, independent variable, on the left 
and our dependable dependent variable height on the right, we could set up a table of values using the two points identified in the problem. On the left side, our x and y coordinates would be x for the number of stacks, which is 12, and y would be our height, 142.75. The same could be said about the other stack of paper, where in this case we have five stacks and a total height of the table plus the stacks of 100.75 centimeters. Noting that the first point would be in our table of values somewhere with values before and after it. And the same could be said about our second point, and that would go in the table as well. We can now use some of our knowledge from previous units where we found the rate of change or the slope using the differences in the table. So in this case, by subtracting our two heights, as we did in the first problem, we end up with 42 centimeters, and we end up with seven stacks, which ultimately give us the same rate of change. So since we have the slope, we could then follow through using the same method we did on the previous slide, where students would find the height of seven stacks or the height of five stacks individually and then subtract to find the table height. Or we can apply some of our knowledge from our previous stacking paper sequel where we use slope and a point to solve. So let's take a look at what that looks like. If you recall that starting with the slope y-intercept form of a linear relation, we could substitute 6 for our slope, and then we could go to one of our points and use the x and y values for x and y in our equation in order to help us find the y-intercept. So in this case, I'm going to use this point. However, you could also use any point on the line, including the one below. And now that we've subbed in 12 for x for our 12 stacks, and the total height of the table in the 12 stacks of 142.75, we can now isolate for b our y-intercept, or in this case, more specifically, the height of our table. So doing some quick math, 6 times 12 is 72. And now we'll isolate B by doing opposite operations and subtracting 72 to get B and a 0 here, which is equal to 70.75. So you can see that we do have the same initial value, which is our table height. And we can also write this relationship as an equation just to solidify our understanding. Now one final method I'd like to show is using the slope formula, which we learned in a previous unit but haven't really been utilizing much thus far. So once your comfort level is to a point where you understand what you're doing, I'd suggest that you start using the formula in order to save yourself some of these steps. Now if you don't recall, the formula I'm referring to is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And if you think back to our table of values, essentially what you're doing with y2 minus y1 is simply looking at subtracting any two y values in the table to get your rise and the matching x values to get your run. So in this case, we're going to focus on the same two points, and essentially what we're going to do is we're going to identify each point as either point 1 or point 2. I suggest taking the point with the larger x value and calling that the second point. So we'll call this point 2, and 
we'll call this point point one. And thus, point two has an x2 value and a y2 value, and point one has an x1 value and a y1 value. And simply all we're going to do is going to plug these values into our formula like so. So as you can see here, y2 is 142.75. There's y2, 142.75. My x1, or sorry, x2 is 12, and thus x2, the matching x value to y2, is 12. And we do the same thing for the other point. So here's our y1 and our x1 as well. And when we actually perform the math by subtracting our y2 and y1 as well as x2, x1, we end up with the same rate of change or same slope of 42 centimeters per seven stacks or six centimeters for every one stack. At this point, you could then sub your slope into your y equals mx plus b as well as either of the points on the line or any point from that line, I should say, in order to solve for your y-intercept, which we already know is 70.75. So as a quick recap, note that you can find whenever you're given two points, as we were in the previous problem, we can use those two points to find the slope using our slope formula, or by using a table and using your differences, or even using logic. So how you determine to find the slope is really up to you. However, the formula is there to try to make your life easier. Then you're going to sub in your slope and one of the points, it doesn't matter which one, into y equals mx plus b. You'll then solve for b, which is your initial value, and in our case, that was the height of the table, or the starting height. And then finally, sub in your values to get your linear equation. So in this example, although it has no context, I'd like to prepare you because I do know that on your EQAO standardized test, a lot of times the questions um, have li little in terms of media or little in terms of context for you to wrap your brain around. I'll give you something where we're just looking at two points and we want to find the equation that passes through those two points. So if I look at those two, I would name the two points, whatever you'd like. Once again, I always, by habit, take the point with the higher x value and I call that point 2, which makes this point 1, and thus we have our x and y values. And from here, we can use the slope formula to quickly find the slope of the line without having to draw a table, a graph, or use any other type of real thinking, which is kind of sad because, once again, we do want you thinking during these questions. However, algebra is here to try to make routine calculations easier. So we have our basic math here, noting once again that y2 is a value in the y column, minus another value in the y column, just like we've done all year long. And the same goes for our x values, an x value, and I'm subtracting another x value. When we sub these values in, we have 10 minus 2 on the top, or 8, and 5 minus 1 on the bottom, which is 4, and we can simplify that to 8 over 4, or 2 over 1, some might just show that as 2. We then take our slope and we sub it into y equals mx plus b. We also grab a point to sub in for x and y. It's up to you which point you use, but for me, I look at, I try to pick smaller numbers. If there's a 0, I try to pick the point with a 0 in it, try to make the math as simple as possible, and we sub it into the equation to solve. So I've subbed in 2 for y, and I've subbed in 1 for x, and now we're going to solve this simple equation.
and we can see that our initial value for this line is 0, giving us an equation of y equals 2x plus 0, or simply y equals 2x. That also tells us that we have a direct variation, which means we're starting at the origin, and we should be going up by 2 over 1 each time to get our points. And essentially what we should note is that eventually we should run into both of the given points. So by doing a little bit, using a little bit of my knowledge of graphing using slope and the y-intercept, I should be able to see the two given points on this line. And as you can see, 1, 2 is in fact on the line, and 5, 10 is also on the line. We do have a direct variation beginning at the origin, and our equation is given to us below.